Chafing Armor mini episodes, Descent into the Demon Webs, episode five. Oh, beautiful dream. Welcome back to the Chafing Armor podcast. I am your diabolical dungeon master, Michael Corley. And with me tonight is Lee. Lee, tell us who you will be playing. G'day, everybody. My name is Lee, and I'll be playing Corvus Dragon Choked, the last of his kind from the last campaign. <laughs> you, you are not wrong. And also with us tonight is Dare. Dare, tell us who you will be playing. Howdy, y'all. I'm Dare, and I'm playing Gronk of Grumpsh, the revenge-thirsty cleric of Grumpsh and St. Cuthbert. Indeed. And also with us tonight is James. James, tell us who you will be playing. Hello, everyone. My name is James, and I'm playing Gan, the spell scale. Yes, I know I'm playing another scale, spell scale, but there's a reason <laughs> for it. Uh, spell scale fighter warlock. I love it. And last but definitely not least, we have Riley. Riley, tell us who you will be playing. Hi, I'm Riley, and I'm playing your blazingly bright Eleonora Dawn, an Eldrin monk. Beautiful. And when we last left our players, they had been gathered together by Corvus Dragon Choked for a mission. A mission from the Raven Queen to slay Loth, the Spider Queen. Even though such a mission would almost certainly result in some, if not all, of their deaths. They have begun the descent towards the Underdark to make their way with a map given to them by Jane O'Malley, the last survivor of a pact from Loth, a pact which seems to have been broken, that if she looked the other way, when the various denizens of the Underdark came out, they would not harm anyone in their village. But with that map, you have begun your way down. However, the uh, three kobolds scouting ahead uh, done touched some some crazy psycho mold and went cuckoo for cocoa birds and attacked you. You were able to successfully subdue them. However, two of the party nearly stepped into phasing traps, which would have horribly disfigured, if not killed you, had you fallen into it as you look ahead. You see, throughout the tunnel, various skeletons in different parts of phasing. Some of them, as you would imagine, are simply half in, half out, uh, one hand up, one hand caught in the stone. Some of them are halfway down with part of their skull looking out with sightless eyes. And yes, you do even see one that appears to have fallen and uh, only the legs are out. Uh, almost amusing if it were not so horrifying to imagine what their fate must have been like in that last moment before the stone sealed over their eyes. What would you like to do? Well, once uh, Gan jumps up from almost being sucked into the ground, he just stays a few inches off the ground. <laughs> just whoop! That is true. You can You can literally fly, and that is quite wise. Uh, your leg is aching, but you've you've had worse. Uh, you were quite fortunate and quite fast. Corvus looks around for a way to either disable the trap entirely or disable the, the, the trigger, at least. Okay, uh, you'll need to make a good roll, but you it is possible, so give me that roll. You're asking the rogue to... Do, okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you already knew this, so you probably made the DC stupid but well I do try to make things realistic uh, whether or not it's you know it how really, hard it is for you it doesn't matter but that's a 20 on the die for a search of 29 29 so uh, what I will say is that um, with a, I, I did need you to make a 30 to completely disarm the traps oh sorry that's plus my um, traps trap finding trap sense plus 5 okay so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then, then you you 24. do find what, what I was going to say with a twenty <laughs> with a twenty nine, you are able to easily guide everyone through. But with a thirty plus, you do actually find a glyph on the wall, and with a little help from Gan, who of course uh, speaks the language of the Drow, 
uh, you are able to disable this trap, and there is a vroom moment, and you can almost all feel the solidity come back to the plates. Uh, they are all completely random, by the way. There is not a pattern to them. Uh, they are simply uh, plates that you would have to test one by one and go forward cautiously, but you think that you have disabled this trap. <laughs> Corvus Corvus pulls out his bedroll and tosses it into the, the field. Or rolls it okay. across the across the ground, across the field. Okay. Uh yeah, uh, there it, it bounce, bounce, bounces and just kind of bumps up against one of the skeletons that is looking up at you imploringly. Uh and then it just kind of <laughs> falls over backwards and breaks. He, but he, uh he. it appears to not it appears to be solid. Corvus follows the trajectory of the bedroll exactly. Uh, <laughs> Even okay. doing the, yeah. all the little bounces that it did. Why not? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it yeah, looks absolutely. weird, but hey, it made it to the other end doing that, so I will too. That's the plan. One of my favorite things in fiction is when you actually show it so often. Like in, in the movie Dune, the most recent Dune movie, uh, they... They had to show the little shuffling step that they do to not attract the sandworms, mm. and you could just you could just say that in a novel, but like, would you actually have to show the guys do it a little doop 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 do? Like, it looks yeah. pretty stupid, uh, and so like, you know, you, you look kind of stupid doing it, but hey, it guarantees that you don't die horribly. So who cares? Yeah. It kind of reminds me of the uh, the one guy from that movie Yellow Beard, where he's following the the treasure map and he's just like stumble stumble roll roll crawl crawl <laughs> shuffle shuffle wow i, I haven't about thought that. about that movie in years talk about a gen x movie right <laughs> sorry anyway <laughs> okay uh so to um i i definitely could you know heighten the tension of this particular moment but what I want to say is that there is just a deadly silence as you all traverse. Obviously, you, Gan, are floating. Uh, but as you traverse this trap area, you you don't know how long this trap has been active. Because there are quite a few bodies here uh, in various states of decay. Uh, but whether something about the cave itself is preserving them you don't know but uh you just silently make your way through these bodies phased half in half out um occasionally like you know a little rusted armor or a sword half in and half out as if they were trying to draw it as you just quietly silently make your way through there's a moment where each of you feels uh chill down the back of your spine. Now, uh, your dungeon master has a thing um, that he is forgetting the name for at the moment um, where I sometimes dream while I'm still awake. Lucid dreaming? It's it's like lucid dreaming. It's, it's more boring and technical than that. It, it's where I'm almost asleep, but I, I'm not quite asleep. And I will begin to dream while I'm still awake. Um, the the downside of it is called um, night terrors, uh, but I haven't had those in a long time, thankfully. So um, there's a moment where you all feel a chill and you all think back to a very dark moment in your life. Like just, just point of order. Is this yes. charm or sleep? Is it what? Is this being charmed or sleep? Because I'm... Immune to sleep, and I have advantage versus charmed. This is like a sleep spell um, in its design, but it is not an actual sleep spell, so it does not not affect you, but it also like doesn't hurt you. Uh, but you still feel the effects of this spell, or whatever it is. Um, is just all of you, for a moment, just think back. And you just think of a very dark moment in your life. And it just kind of... Just kind of that, that goose walking over your grave 
type of feeling. And then it's gone. And it's gone. And definitely you, Corvus, are affected the least of everyone as you make your way further down. Uh, and that's when you begin to hear Corvus. Hey, I let us out. Let us out of here. Mimi, <laughs> Mimi. Uh, I, I think your friends. Do, I'm gonna. Uh, Corvus, Corvus wants to do a quick check to make sure the area we're in is actually safe. Okay. <laughs> the, the 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 mold on the walls, the getting attacked, and this whole giant, you know, area where everyone can get phased into the walls. There's a lot of traps around. I would like mm-hmm. to be safe before I, you know, let 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 the let the morons out. Okay. Uh, so they, they just kind of keep... It's, 20, it's very, very muffled. 22 for the spot. Okay. As far as you can tell, there are not any traps that you can see just ahead. That was worded incredibly, incredibly weirdly, so I'm just going <laughs> to... Um... <laughs> Yes. Corvus, Corvus pulls Mimi off his back and just kind of opens the flap and says, It is exceedingly dangerous out here, and you have already fallen into the easiest trap. Do you really want to come out? They all look at each other and they say, uh, uh, We're going to keep guard in here. That's what I thought. He Mimi. just closes. <laughs> uh, as <laughs> closes you. Me as again. you as you see that, uh, a, a internal tendril of um, Mimi extends out and and hands a small but but very valuable gem that you were unaware of to uh, Suck, to Sucks. Yes. Um, her, her, Mimi and, uh, and Sucks have a have an interesting relationship together, if I remember rightly. Yes. <laughs> Mimi formed a uh, very weird bond with this little kobold to like the point a, like where, a <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was to the point where. She did she like defend sucks from like being eaten or something like I can't remember. Basically, but. basically. She was she was very, very um uh, very protective. Attached. Protective, <laughs> yes. And <laughs> and like point, you, you know, you, point, you know you're broke, but yet somewhere Mimi has this like, you know, emerald. She's done that before. That, she pulled out like yes, a, a gem or yes. something and just gave uh-huh. it to gave it to 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 sucks again. Sucks now uh, has two gems from, from well, I don't oh, know what she, she did with the other she, one because it was two years ago. She lost the last one long ago. Yeah, yeah. she spent yeah, it. But, she spent it or gambled it or something. But uh, but yeah, this is a new Mimi, one. <laughs> Corvus just kind of lifts an eyebrow and and then just closes Mimi again and puts it back on his on his back. Rock like, walks up to Corvus, la- laughs a little bit, and hands him like a, a giant fistful of jerked meat here for them. Corvus takes it and inclines his head. Thanks. Opens the opens the uh, opens Mimi again. And just sort of hands the hands the meat down into the the, the depths, mm-hmm. um, and 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 says, "This is from the big guy, but uh, it's it's up to you whether you eat it or not. I genuinely don't know where it came from." Yeah. They immediately eat it, and a, another <laughs> pseudopod tendril comes out, and uh, you see that Mimi begins to eat the meat as well, or it, you know, absorbs it into its persona and begins to digest it. Gronk just starts was- chuckling as he walks away, and he's tapping the ground with the butt end of his spear, and just laughs and laughs and laughs. Uh, Corvus, Corvus so, sort of looks down, looks into the the the, the bag, and, and into Mimi, and just like, I know this is going to come back to bite me someday, but they seem happy. <laughs> and he's back, so, back on back on his back and moves on. Like I have a I have a very important question, uh, and it is perfectly okay if the answer is no. Uh, of all the characters, have any of you ever consumed? Psychedelic medication, shall we say? Characters or players? Uh, players? Char- players or characters? characters <laughs> not players. I don't want to know if it's the players. Either uh, way, it's yes. Because if it was the players, I'm not telling you. If it's the characters, no. yes. No, characters. Okay, so we got two yeses. 
No. Uh, no. Gronk has eaten enough stuff that there have been some deleterious effects. <laughs> there, probably, there's probably been accidentally or some moments. <laughs> he has not and, intentionally and int- gone about eating anything. It's just he's not that picky or cautious mm-hmm. when he eats something. And some some Corvus, things got in there. Corvus, Corvus makes poisons. He has to test the things he makes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Gan you know, uh, so lives in the Underdark for a long time, so half the things down there are, are psychedelics. Are, it's, you're not wrong. Uh, the interesting thing is the one person who said no, uh, Eleanor, where are you from? Um, the Feywild. Um, oh, I believe it's the Feywild. Is that what I said? Yeah, yeah. no, you're from yeah. the Feywild. It's the court um, of the Summer Queen of the Feywild. The court of- there, there is no psychedelics that you can take that can out psychedelic the Feywild. Uh, or I should say parts of the Feywild. So even though you have not, you come from a place where reality is... Loopy. Uh, loopy is a great way to put it. Um, so all of you have a moment as you're coming down where you have this deja vu of the, re- of the th- other three of you of when you have ingested things that have altered your perception. And to you, Eleanor, Eleonora, it's almost like coming home. Uh, there's, except that the Feywild has an internal consistency, and it also, even though it's very dangerous, has a beauty to it. It's, it's very beautiful there, especially if you embrace the, essentially, the insanity. So, so, so um, what you're saying is, we experience deja vu... And Eleonora experiences jamais vu. <laughs> I guess. I guess so. I guess so. Yeah. Um, but so this is not correct. But yeah, that I, I, I'm my French is uh, somewhere around zero. So, <laughs> well, jamais um, vu is the experience of something you, 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 you have no recollection or experience of something that has actually been very familiar to you. As in, like uh, you go somewhere you have been many times before, and you still think you've never been there before. Interesting. Interesting. Whereas Deja Vu is obviously the other way around. Now, I I, I don't need to go into whether or not your individual character had a, you know, say, good trip or a bad trip. Um, But Eh, there is... This is wrong. As you begin to walk into these tunnels and make your way further down... You actually, be, what you, the first thing you wonder, Corvus, is like, did I accidentally touch some of that fungus? You know, like, you wonder, like, have, have I been affected? Have I been compromised? But the but you, first thing Corvus would do would be then put a mask on. Okay. Like, he'd take out some, some, some cloth and put it over his nose and mouth. Well, he actually he doesn't even need the cloth, it's literally part of his. Thief or rogue costume. True. Just put it up um, over his. I would like you, Corvus, to make a uh, fortitude saving throw. I hate you. Um, <laughs> it's not my worst, but it's not my. It's not reflex, so I hate you. Um, uh, twenty-four. Wait, is that it? Is that right? Hang on. Sorry. No, 26. 17 plus 9. Okay. Um, so you think you've been able to resist whatever is happening. Uh, everyone, it's just the walls seem squishy. And you notice little things starting to grow out of the ground. And things that should not, especially you, Gan, you know what grows on the walls in the Underdark. Yeah. Uh, you, the bioluminescence, the strange creatures, the unnaturalness is natural to you. These should not be here. Like, imagine a small pine tree just starting to grow out of the middle of the cavern. There is no way that would happen. Just literally none. Um, that the cavern is starting to lose its cohesion and sensicalness 
Uh, I would like everyone to make a willpower saving throw. Now I really know what you get. <laughs> um, is there is there anything uh, oh poison associated with this? Oh um, no. <gasps> okay. I was just messing with him. Okay, that is an eighteen for Gronk. Okay. That is a sixteen for, for Eleonora. Oh, sorry. Okay. No, no, you're Ooh. fine. And uh, for Corvus? Uh, 22. Okay. And for Gon? Uh, that's a 27. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Um, so this save was not versus an attack. This is literally just you processing what you're seeing. It's like you've all seen those images of like really poorly made uh, carpeting on stairs. And you look down and it's like, ah. That is what <laughs> yes. your brain is is doing right now. Is like it's having trouble processing what you're seeing, but you are all just kind of fighting your way through it. Um, and currently, it's not it's not affecting you too much, too much, as you make your way forward. And that is when you hear a sound. It's a sound you've all heard as adventurers because all of you has slept in a rucksack surrounded by three or four other rough type fellows uh, and ladies. It is the sound of snoring. Corvus, Corvus sort of turns to Gan. It's just like, do you think we walked into something's mouth? Uh, uh, that's when you see the Millennium Falcon come flying past you. <laughs> that, that's literally what I had in mind. Like, I, I, I'm sitting here thinking, the walls have gone all gooey, weird crap is coming out, and there's yeah. weird st- st- I'm seeing weird stuff. From- Other than the Minox, I wouldn't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, like- I, I hope not. Um, so I guess there's one way to find out. And uh, Gan points at a at a wall and Zaps it with an Eldritch Blast. Okay. Uh, obviously, your attack is successful. It's uh, the broadside of a barn, uh, essentially. Right. Um, and there, there is a, there, there is actually a slight, like quiver, but it is not the quiver of a creature like stirring in its sleep or or anger or something like that. It is the disruption of this Illusion. altered state. This is whatever this is is like slightly ripples when you attack the wall. Okay. Um, I do. We I all have... see it, or just, or just can. Uh, you all see it. Yeah, you all see it. Okay. Um, I do. I do have the ability to. Um, again, does have um, basically mage sight. He can use uh, detect magic at will. So he's going to look around with that and see if he can find a source of anything or whether it's just all over or what have you. Uh, it is absolutely all over, uh, but it is becoming stronger down the tunnel. 100%. Like, you don't even need to roll. It's just, you know, brighter and stronger yeah. down there. This is going to get worse before it gets better. I think we all figured that was going to happen. <laughs> Is there anything we can do? Gronk reaches into his pack and holds out rings to Gan, Corvus, and Eleonora uh, and says, These are rings of the serpent. They help you resist poison. It's, I don't think it's poison. If it was poison, I would know. It is the beginning. Clovis will take one and slip it into his I mean, into his pocket just in case. It's, it's better than nothing. Yeah, I'll and take it anyway. Who knows when it might come in handy down the road? <laughs> down the road. So yeah. I mean, spiders. There's lots of poisonous things down here, so they will come gotcha. in handy. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely come in handy. <laughs> Clovis he sh- thinks he Clovis. shows you all that he is already wearing one on his gloved hand. What's what's the what's the bonus on what? it on these? Uh, it just. Uh, resistance to poison. Uh, so, uh, save for half, save for half damage. Um, s- sweet. So, I would like, uh, you <laughs> another trap 
roll for me, Corvus. Okay. 26. 26. So um, you are being stupidly careful after uh, the earlier encounters and also just your your brain, like you're, you're starting to get, you're all starting, but especially you, Corvus, looking for traps. It's starting to give you just a splitting headache because it's like you're just trying to look into nonsense and parse out the nonsense. But even through that, your your skill as a rogue comes through and you realize that you almost walked through not a trap, but a ward that was would function very similar to a trap, which is why you detected it. Um, and it, it is some kind of ward designed to go off if someone crosses it. Corvus calls again over and says, there's something, there's something here. I can't, I, I'm not magical, I don't know, but I know this is magical. It, it's some kind of, of like, ward or like, field or something hmm. can you make heads or tails um, of it uh, Gam will take a closer look uh, so the first thing that you do notice is that it is not written in uh, Underdark or okay. any of the common languages of the Underdark um, you th- or do you speak Elvish I don't know if Corvus does specified my languages um Yes. Yes, he does. Yes. Uh, so this is written in... El- the ward is is glyphed in Elvish. And this is a ward of warning. Uh, so it is not an attack. It is meant to warn someone that someone is passing by. Aha. Uh-huh. And it, oh. is designed, it is designed to go off if you cross it. It's someone's alarm system. Cool. Yep. Yep. <laughs> uh... Any way to disarm it that I can do, huh. or is that purely magical? Uh, you could. It would be a high difficulty for you two because it is magical. Uh, or uh, Gan, you could try if to I do were. something if you want. Well, I could blast the crap out of it. That's about it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Uh, I don't yeah, do. That. I don't do the fancy. Alarm, I don't do the fancy if it's an magics. Alarm, I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I don't do the alarm, fancy I'm magics because gonna... I thought we were going to have a wizard with us but we don't so um i didn't do any of that it's true um, it's true uh, right. but uh, um yeah any tips um does it does it seem to be like basically like it's a it's like a line across the entire entryway and that's if you pass this point it's gonna go off kind of thing there are there are two set into the wall opposite of each other, and you think it is what we would think of like a laser beam if you cross through. But the 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 thing that you're not quite sure of is like this isn't a laser beam, so you're not sure is like is it anywhere or is it like just between that area? Could you theoretically step over them? Like right, because uh, the they're they're like a couple. Yeah, they're they're like a couple of feet off the ground, uh, so you don't know for certain. If it's going past it altogether, or if it's just right. crossing the that invisible thread between the two, right? Does Gronk it, does it walks, seem to be like walk. emitting a field or anything? Yeah. Uh, it's like Gronk a visible field, or like magically visi- magically mm-hmm. visible field. I I, I want to know what Gronk does, please. Gronk uh-huh. walks up and goes, "Where is it?" Why? Corvus points at the two two glyphs on the <laughs> wall opposite each other and goes. Between those two. He holds up the spear, the holy spear of St. Cuthbert, and casts Dispel Magic. Ah, beautiful. Okay. Corvus's respect yeah. for this ugly-ass ogre is really increasing. <laughs> I'm, I'm impressed. Yeah. If it works, anyway. Well, let's see if it yeah. works. Um... All right. On a successful check, the spell ends. Oh. Uh, his spell say that is an 18. That will succeed. Uh, so I want you to tell me how, what it looks like when you dispel this ward. Uh, Gronk walks up and uh, after 
Corvus has pointed out where the ward was. He holds up the spear of the Holy Spear of Dis- uh, Disruption and murmurs a prayer to St. Cuthbert. And the glow f- travels up his arm, over, fills the spear, and goes out the spearhead like a pulse and just wipes away any. Uh, the ward in their immediate vicinity. And there is a pulse of power and there's a, there's a moment of like terror in your heart, Corvus, when it, it mm-hmm. feels like the ward is going to activate and then literally the power of this god just overwhelms it and just it just, it, you, you see both of them and there's like, there's literally like a little red mist that comes up from the ward and all that's left is like the little circle that was drawn to create it, but the actual glyph itself is gone on both ends, and it has been dispelled. Corvus nods. Once again, well done. The way and is safe for you, little ones. <laughs> there, is a, there is a slight all. there is a slight breeze that comes through as, as the word is dispelled. Eleonora, you are the only one who notices this. Um, a leaf lands just right at your feet and the leaf is blackened and decayed and you recognize this leaf is this was the plague that swept through your people and devastated the forest where your kingdom came from at the behest of Loth. And then it just sort of like crumbles into dust. Eleonora growls and smashes her foot into the ground and stomps it into the dirt, even though there is nothing left to begin with. She wants to make sure it's not there. You all right, princess? Hmm? Corvus asks, this has happened out of nowhere. Like mm-hmm. to the rest of yeah, us, we didn't suddenly... see anything. So he's literally turns. He's, you okay, princess? Watch it up ahead. <sighs> she um, okay? <sighs> and she storms off, not too far ahead, but not willing to talk. Corvus nods. All right. Yeah, eyes on, heads on swivels. If she's mad, something's something's coming. Gan, as you walk forward, you mm-hmm. smell something that you cannot forget for the rest of your life. And you have had had dealings with bugbears throughout your existence in the underdark. They are they are mm-hmm. not uncommon, shall we say? But there was one bugbear in particular who was going to throw you into a black pool that was now glowing a baleful blue. And that one ended up uh, through some some celestial bugs uh, falling into it instead. And um, the smell is the smell of that bugbear's fur burning as its body turns into a skeleton and is is slowly subsumed by that pool you will never forget that smell as long as you live it was a horrifying smell as that bugbear not even deigning to look at you was looking at the sorcerer penton and tried to snap him in half only to fail miserably uh, but that smell just wafts towards you from ahead as you make your way down. Ah, good memory. <laughs> Bad smell, good memory. As you all make, I, I mean, you're not wrong. Uh, as you all you make your way down, uh, I would like everybody to let me know how sneaky you are all being. Um... Uh, Let's let's start with the oh, sneaky, the least sneaky of you all, Corvus. Um, the one who's 
basically always on. Yeah, okay. Uh huh. Uh huh. Let me know how uh, silently you move. Okay, for the listener and everybody, mm-hmm. Corvus's base move silently is plus twenty three. <laughs> Yikes! Do you really want me to roll this? Because I will. No, I do. I do want you to roll. Because everybody's <laughs> matters. Here comes the twenty-four. <laughs> Make one guess of what I rolled. Do it. Do uh, it. Uh, do a natural it. twenty. No, it's nineteen. Um, <laughs> nineteen. <laughs> nineteen plus twenty-three. I suck at math, but I'm pretty sure I'm sneaky. Yeah, that is very, very sneaky. It's 40, 42. Uh, it's 42, yeah. I just yeah. I just did it in my head. <laughs> uh, what about you, Gan? Uh, hey, that's a decent roll. Uh, it's 27. 27? It helps very that he's good. floating. And it's true. It's true. You're not making too much noise. And Grunk? Grunk gets a lowly 16. Still stomp, stomp. respectable, though obviously, yeah, you are not the stealthiest. And uh, Eleonora. 31. 31. So this is a very quiet bunch. When when even the stomp, stomp, big boy uh, Gronk is uh, fairly quiet as you make your way down, down, as you make your way down. And Corvus, you feel an ache. Uh, the way, like, say, I don't know, a dungeon master who broke his arm in the first grade uh, and his bones would just randomly ache when a storm is coming in. You suddenly feel this just ache on your ankle where a certain chain used to be. And you remember that that as long as you could remember as a child, it was there. And you did not know that not only was it a sign of your captivity to that wizard, but also literally denying you your true form. And there's just a moment when it just aches as you feel that. Well, as rain's coming. Way down. Uh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, I uh, uh, seem like a storm's going to be coming here. Pretty soon. Uh, yeah. it, al- it always aches before it rains. <laughs> that's right. Um, Having never broken a bone in my life, I don't know what that feels like. So, do not recommend. Knock on wood right now, so walk. Knock on wood. Yeah, do not seriously. recommend. I don't yeah. go outside. I'm I'm safe. <laughs> Quite literally safe. Well, you just hurt, is, you just double is, cursed yourself there. You go. I know, right? This is 100 percent true. I was hanging from a tree branch. I turned to my friend at the base of the tree and I said, Watch "Here, this. I'll show you how to get down." <laughs> uh, but basically, I said, "Here, I'll show you how to get down." And the tr- the branch I was holding onto broke, <laughs> like out of a movie, out of a movie, and then I fell and broke my arm. Uh, it was you just you can't make that stuff up. Anyway, uh, as you all make your way down, the sound of breathing intensifies as you step around a corner. Oh, so stealthily. And as you step around that corner, Grunk, you can feel the feeling, the space, the open space of being left in a courtyard when you were all alone and there was no one there. There was no one to help you. There was no one around. It was a moment of your childhood. That, that you thought was lost, but now you remember being utterly alone and looking around. You have the vaguest sense of your tribe, your mother, your brother, maybe, but no one was there. And you spent the night cold and hungry, and it only got worse from there. And that's when you step around and you all see it. In this chamber, something is sleeping. A large form, round, with the tentacles slowly wafting, a sleeping beholder. 
And that's where we'll end! Chafing Armor, Descent into the Deeming Webs, Part 5. Very cool. Time Woo. to dream, everyone. Good job, everybody. Y'all did some really good role playing. I loved it. Lots of uh, this, neat uh, little interactions to help get to know the yeah. characters. I, I love uh, one of my favorite things is when y'all interact with each other. Uh, we also get a special. Uh, we, we are just ending the episode. Uh, uh, Izzy, do you want to say anything to our wonderful audience? I'll I'll be back at the other one. Good job, guys. Did anybody die? <laughs> Did anybody die? No, not yet. <laughs> Nobody died. Yes. Yay. <laughs> just emotionally, well, uh, th- it's fine. <laughs> well, thank you all so much for playing. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for not killing us yet. Uh, uh, absolutely. Thank you. And uh, until we have a chance to uh, find out what's happening with this sleeping beholder, I wish you all the very best. And until I see y'all, we will roll with you soon. <laughs>